Hello everyone, I am Prasad from Structural Guide, Civil and Structural Engineering Knowledge Base. Today we are going to discuss about curing of concrete. Before moving to the today's discussion, I just want to request you to follow our YouTube channel. You may receive the videos on civil and structural engineering related matters. Okay, let's start. Before discussing about the curing, uh, we need to know why we do the curing, what happened, uh, technically what happened behind this. Let's first discuss about the concrete production. How concrete uh, is produced? Now, the basically the reaction between water and cement is the process we use to produce the concrete. With this result of this reaction is the production of the concrete. Now, the heat or the, the, the rise of the temperature in this is process is very important to us. The heat generated in this process is called the heat of hydration. That is the reaction for between cement and water generate heat. That heat is called heat of hydration. Right. In addition to that, we want to know about the surface evaporation. Once we pour the concrete onto the surface, its surface get dry by evaporation. These are the things we have to keep in mind when you discussing about the curing. Another thing we have to discuss here, uh, the rise of the temperature. Now, when we do the concrete in cold weather, now in such cases, the temperature of the concrete won't be adequate to have this reaction completely happen, I mean the reaction to complete. In such cases, we have to increase the heat. This also falls under the curing of the concrete. Let's discuss these things latter part of this uh, video. Let's see what are the reason to rise the temperature of the concrete. Mix design. Now, as I explained you earlier. Uh, the mix designs basically cement content, water content, and then admixtures and other things uh, contents we discuss. Now the cement content is the dominant factor we need to consider in the mix design. The higher the cement content, higher the heat of hydrogen, higher the rise of the temperature. Yeah, so when we uh, the the mix design is uh, very important when we consider the temperature of the concrete. Then the initial temperature of the concrete. Now at the time of the pouring of the concrete, the temperature of the concrete effect or the influence to influence on the rise of the temperature. Because the rising of the temperature will begin with the initial temperature. Therefore, if the initial temperature is lower, the rise of the temperature will be lower, heat will be lower. The second thing is the dimension of the concrete. It also affects to the rise of the concrete. Now, for example, rise of the temperature. For example, thinner slabs, the concrete temperature won't rise that much. But if you have, if you pour a large volume concrete, like one meter by one meter, or one meter by thirty meter large raft foundations, in those cases, the temperature will rise uh, significantly. Those things we'll discuss later part of this video. Therefore, we have to keep in mind when you when your dimensions of the element increases the temperature of the concrete will rise. The last thing we want to discuss is the ambient temperature. Now, if the ambient temperature is high, the rise of the temperature will be higher because it's also, now the rising will start from the ambient because the concrete mixed temperature will be on ambient, the aggregate temperature will be on ambient. Unless you cool, cool down the aggregate or water, or unless you still water, the ambient temperature will be the temperature of this material used for the concrete. So therefore, ambient temperature also will be important on rising the temperature of the concrete. So let's discuss the most important part of this uh, video. What is curing of concrete? Why we need curing of concrete? Mainly, we can highlight three things relevant to the curing of concrete. First thing, we do curing to reduce the heat of hydration. We use curing method to absorb heat 
generated this hydration process the first thing second thing we use curing to increase the temperature of the concrete there are methods to increase the temperature of the concrete that also one kind of a curing method those things will be discussed in a separate article separate video the third one is the maintain the moisture in the concrete surface if concrete surface get dried there won't be adequate water or moisture to react reaction so in such a cases the reaction won't happen properly so the the strength of the concrete in the cover zone will be reduced it's it's significantly affect on the durability of concrete in addition to these three these are the main main purposes of of the curing of concrete we discussed three things uh, the finally we go have to keep in mind about the uh, maintaining the temperature gradient and the maintaining the temperature difference now gradient in the sense the drop of the temperature per meter length temperature difference means the temperature uh, temperature difference between core and the surface for 1 meter by 1 meter cube if you consider uh, core is 500 mm from the surface then the core to surface temperature difference also very important we'll discuss in detail about this in next slide when to start con curing and how long should it be done this is a big question but we have to keep in mind now as i explained you earlier now curing is depend on many factors now basically i have mentioned about three things the reasons that we need to do curing so these are the things we have to keep in mind when you start curing for example surface drying now when you put the concrete on a slab now it start drying when you put the concrete in the night time it won't dry at the night time it will slowly getting it will get dried very slowly and the temperature also not that high there, therefore air, therefore the rise of the temperature will be also lower then evaporation also will be lower at night but if you put the concrete at day time the rise of temperature will be high evaporation will be high so immediately after pouring the concrete or oh, when when concrete surface start getting dry you have to do the curing this is the norm when the surface is getting dry you have to do the curing but it's you have to consider now depending on the curing method you have to consider when to do it and how to do it the next thing is how many days we have to do curing generally as a general norm we do curing 7 days this is the basic uh, idea most of the guideline suggest to do the curing for 7 days because now concrete gained strength uh, initially now majority of the most of the strength gain within 7 days that's about over 60% of the strength it's gained within first 7 days therefore we do curing at the initial stage now when you do uh, concreting in a extreme weather condition what we what we should do as i explained previously we have to be cautious we have to attend on this seriously if you do not take preventive measures or necessary measure or necessary curing correct and correct curing techniques you will be in trouble concrete may get cracked there will be so many issues temperature rise may be there internal cracks may be there so we have to be very careful when you do the when you do the concreting hot weather now let's see what are the benefit of the curing by this uh, this slide we discuss the importance and the advantages of the curing now as i previously explained if you have adequate moisture in the cover zone the reaction will complete then the durability will be improved if you do, doesn't have adequate moisture in the concrete surface it will uh, significantly affect the strength of the concrete and the cover zone will be 
strength of the cosine will be lower then the there are possibilities of reinforcement getting corrosion corroded therefore we have to keep it in mind and we have to attend the curing we have to do the curing properly it avoid drying sinkage cracks now if if you are not allowed to surface to dry drying sinkage won't happen then the drying sinkage crack a surface cracks in the concrete won't occur this the next thing is the internal cracking of the concrete now as i uh, previously explained now now the the temperature of the concrete we can we can let uh, let it rise the way it's want there are so many issues connected with this now you, we can you can see this chart now as a general norm when when you when we doing a large pour concrete we generally limit the temperature of the concrete to the 70 degrees if uh, temperature exceed uh, 70 degrees stays there is a risk of formation of delayed etring guides etring guides now to avoid this we limit the temperature now how do we limit the temperature that's the question now before pouring the concrete we don't know how the temperature rise in such cases when we have a large pour concrete we do mock up test uh, the concrete block is created similar to the element size for example we need to do say we need to do a 1 meter by 1 meter column so we may create 1 meter by 1 meter by 2 meter uh, concrete block and monitor the temperature you can see here in this figure uh there is a concrete block created and the you, you can see tc50 the core temperature is increased to 80 degrees this is now depending on the guideline this value may be allowed but as a general norm we keep it around 70 so what we can do is now when 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 high grade of the concrete may be used this kind of situations in such cases now we can use additive like fly ash to reduce the temperature now as a general norm in base on in in some standards allowed to in, increase or that's allowed to use the fly ash up to 35% now that's may be depend on your standard or your specification but if you have use low fly ash content you can increase the fly ash content then then the this rise of the temperature will be lower those things can be done if you if you do the mock up test mock up test with the real real foam work real curing method uh, real same concrete then we 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 get the we get the actual parameters or the real parameters then we can take preventive measures to avoid minimize the rise of the temperature so by that we can avoid formation of delayed etching guide we have to in addition we have to maintain the temperature different and temperature gradient around 20 25 degrees now temperature difference is the temperature uh, difference between core and the surface that is generally we maintain around 25 degrees that this could be uh, vary with your standard but generally it could be kept around 25 degrees the temperature gradient the te drop of the temperature per meter could be maintained around 20 degrees these are general norms so we have to maintain those to avoid cracking cracking the surface cracking internal cracks so if higher the temperature gradient there could be chance of cracking in the concrete uh, the other benefit of the curing uh, increase the enhancement of the compressive strength as i mentioned earlier also if you do curing well the compressive strength will enhance well with that what tightness of the concrete also will be enhanced because now we have a good durable concrete no cracks so what a tightness will be enhanced abrasion resistance also will be enhanced likewise there are many other benefits if you do the curing properly right now we came to the end of this today's video uh, if i summarize why we need to do curing first thing is to absorb the excessive heat in the concrete 
The second thing we if in case we need to raise the temperature to when you do the cold weather we need to increase the temperature it's also kind of a curing method third thing we have to avoid surface evaporations in the concrete so we do curing to maintain we not only apply water there are other methods also we use the curing method to avoid surface water surface water evaporation these are the main things we discussed today as a curing of concrete. Let's meet from another video. Follow us on YouTube channel. Visit our site structureguide.com. Thank you.